Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. I'm super excited for today's video because I've been planning it all day and I just feel like that this is a video that I've wanted to make for a while but I just wasn't exactly sure how to create it and put it all together to be very informative and helpful at the same time. But today we're going to be talking all about fashion and specifically pertaining to sustainability and thrifting and at the same time being affordable and inclusive for everyone. So as you can see, I took a bunch of notes about this so I'm kind of going to be basing it off of this but just sharing a bunch of information and trying to just explain to you as well as help you understand the importance of living a more sustainable lifestyle and just doing your best to help the environment in places that you can and specifically this video will be focusing on the fashion textile aspect of it so yeah let's go okay so Sustainability, I feel like, has definitely gotten thrown around and a little bit misconstrued and I will be the first to say that I feel like I have kind of thrown it around and not necessarily understanding the meaning. So of course, I pulled the dictionary definition out just to kind of make it a little bit easier. Sustainability is the ability to be maintained at a certain level. So basically when you think of something being like sustainable, it's something that you're able to use over and over again or the amount that you're using is going to be able to, I don't know how to say that saying like sustain, it's going to be able to sustain you for a long period of time. I want to kind of give at least my take on sustainability in fashion. I'm sure not everyone has the same opinion as me, which is totally fine. So there's definitely a ton of other videos about fast fashion and you can watch them and sort of get their takes on it. But at least for me, I think that sustainability is not only buying things that were created ethically and from recycled materials or handmade, things of that nature, and not just things that are like secondhand, or sort of reduce, reuse, and recycle. Also sort of, I guess, going off of reduce, reuse, recycle. You can have a top from Forever 21 that you wear for years and years, and that's still a relatively sustainable piece. The way that it was made wasn't necessarily sustainable or good for the environment, but the fact that you're keeping that piece in your wardrobe and you're wearing it, you're maintaining that piece and keeping it, and it's sort of like sustaining you from purchasing more pieces. Does that make, I don't know if that makes sense. And this goes for not just clothing. Reusing the stuff that you already have is the absolute most sustainable way to go about your life Whether that be reusing the same water bottle or the same like shop plastic shopping bag If you're reusing it over and over again That's even better than buying any sort of like actual reusable bag If you're trying to create a more sustainable wardrobe That doesn't mean you have to take every single fast fashion piece out of your wardrobe and just throw it away That literally ruins the whole point and I feel like at least when I was first learning about it I was kind of under the impression that like if it was from a fast fashion place it's automatically bad and needs to like leave your wardrobe and that's not the case so hopefully that sheds some light on that the expectations for men versus women to live the most sustainable or environmentally friendly lifestyles is quite disproportionate an example of that being i feel like what i've seen at least like on social media and like in articles and things like that is that people are pushing like reusable pads for women and like things like that and I just feel like that seems like very extreme compared to I feel like that there's very little of this like marketing or push for men to live these super eco-friendly lifestyles if that makes sense I feel like that people have been like taught to like bully women for buying clothes from a place that's fast fashion or something like that and like kind of we just give men the pass and we're like oh it's fine if they want to buy their stuff from nike or if they want to buy stuff from vineyard vines or whatever like that's fine that's okay but like as soon as a girl buys a crop top from forever 21 it becomes a problem and i'm not saying that this is the case all the time but i definitely feel like that at least in sort of the community that i'm in on social media through youtube and i'm not on tiktok anymore but when i was it was like just beating up women for making little mistakes or not having the most like flawlessly eco-friendly lifestyle and then men are going out and they're like going to the gym with their giant water jugs that they're just going to throw away and buy a new one so now really quickly we're just going to talk about fast fashion I have the actual definition and then again i'll kind of build off of that the fast fashion dictionary definition is inexpensive clothing produced rapidly by mass market retailers in response to the latest trends so this includes all your favorite stores i feel like so zara urban outfitters princess polly forever 21 H&M, AliExpress, Shein, Zaffle, Pretty Little Thing, Misguided, literally any of those stores. Pretty much any online store that you can think of, online clothing store for the most part, 
is fast fashion i watched a documentary on netflix called the true cost i definitely recommend it if you want to hear more information or learn more about the horrible horrible effects of fast fashion because not only is it awful for the planet which is kind of what i'm focusing on in this video but also the workers in the countries where these clothes are being produced are in horrible conditions and there's just so many effects you wouldn't even think about that come from fast fashion and affect these workers that it's it's very eye-opening so i'd recommend that you watch that but basically one thing that they focused on was talking about how big companies stores corporations whatever they have gone from having four seasons of like clothing and sort of like drops of clothing to 52 so that means that every single week new clothes are coming in and just as quickly as they're coming in they're also being taken out if they're not considered trendy anymore so obviously it's great when you see all these stores and you're like oh my gosh i just saw emma chamberlain wearing a sweater vest now every store has one just keep in mind that they're having to produce them so incredibly fast and just absolutely blowing through all the clothes and all the stock that they were selling before to make more room for these new trends. It's just, again, not sustainable. And I also feel like, this is a side note, I didn't write it in here, but I feel like it's important to touch on, is I feel like social media has absolutely ruined, first of all, so many things, but specifically like people's expectations for clothes and just like things and materialistic goods in general. YouTubers have the most insane hauls. That is not sustainable. No matter who you buy it from, no matter where you get it, it's not sustainable to be buying clothes all the time. So many pieces of clothing you're going to wear once. That doesn't make sense. I know that it's sometimes fun, and I definitely was guilty of this at the beginning, to get like really fun statement pieces, but it's not, it doesn't make sense. It's not a sustainable way to just have a bunch of pieces you're going to use once and then throw away. Or even if you donate them, that's just like not a good mentality to have. And I feel like it's become more normalized from all of these like influencers and YouTubers or whatever showing all of the things that they purchase so next i want to kind of address a lot of things that i feel like people sort of like rebuttals that people have when talking about not supporting fast fashion or supporting sustainable fashion and things of that nature first starting with inclusivity because i feel like that's really important and i never thought about which was definitely ignorant of me but i'm glad that i've sort of come to my attention but I never really thought about that thrift stores do not have a great plus size or like petite sort of size of clothes. They're just not very inclusive with sizing and that can definitely be discouraging for people who want to find new clothes and then the store doesn't have any in their size. That is another factor that I think is important to consider. As well as availability, I feel like every time I'm watching a thrifting video, I see a bunch of comments of people talking about like, oh, we don't have thrift stores in my, like where I live or in like in this country or this city or whatever. And I think it's definitely hard because all of these people are pushing like, you have to thrift all your clothes, all this stuff, and then not understanding that not everyone has the access to them. So again, I have some ideas of sort of ways or things to, I guess, sort of help you figure out different means of shopping and then gender i feel like definitely the thrift store is disproportionately more women's clothes than men's or traditional women's clothes and men's i feel like clothing has no gender but um so that's another thing to consider i feel like definitely when i'm thrifting with some of my guy friends they have a harder time finding pieces or there's just not as much to look through i get that so again i'm trying to address all of that in the following things okay so next i want to address a few like i feel like common things that i see it's mostly on tiktok whenever someone does some sort of like fast fashion haul whether it be shein zaffel urban outfitters princess polly whatever um so everyone there's people in the comments that always like to say like oh do you love child labor like making jokes which mm, let's not joke about that but um then people will respond and they'll say there's no ethical consumption under capitalism i'm not saying i agree or disagree with that and i get the point that they're trying to make in the sense of like everything's bad and everything has consequences and like whatever all these big corporations are horrible and so you should do what you want and i'm not arguing that i'm not telling people how to live their lives at the same time i feel like that's not really fair hey guys so i was just editing the video and i realized that what i was about to say and like the way i was going to explain it made no sense so i'm gonna try again here and see if it's a little bit more helpful so when people say that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism i feel like that's just a phrase that they've heard and they're repeating over and over again whether they agree with it or not i think that it's a way that they are trying to justify the person's behavior and actions such as buying a ton of fast fashion or things like that or just making decisions that are not ethical or sustainable I feel like they're also justifying their own actions because it's probably something that they say to themselves when they're placing an order on Shein or things like that. So I feel like that A, that's not really fair to be making that comment just to justify your behavior and also trying to understand. They're the same people also that will say like, oh, well, you're typing on an iPhone, right? Oh, I'm sure you wear Nike, like things like that, which just, it's not 
again, it's not comparable. To say, okay, you have a phone, that means that it's fine for this girl to buy $700 worth of fast fashion pieces she's literally never going to wear. That's not the same thing. A phone has so many capabilities as well as being a one every five years purchase. I'm pretty sure I've had this phone for four or five years. So not the same thing. And also the capabilities compared to the clothes are just not the same. So I understand what people are trying to say, but also I feel like it goes into the idea of like, if someone's trying to encourage you to recycle and you're like, no, I'm not gonna recycle because it's not actually gonna make an impact. I'm just one person. If everyone has a mentality, you're not gonna get anything done. So obviously everyone has to understand that they're part of a bigger picture and trying to make a difference. So not just ignoring that, that's kind of lame. And I just feel like it's important to make an effort in the right direction. So hopefully that helps explain it better. All right, another thing people always like to say that thrifting, shopping secondhand is gross or unclean. I'm not necessarily arguing that. I mean, like, keep in mind these are clothes, like, you wash them. My rebuttal would be you eat at a restaurant, you're using the same silverware, you're using the same plates, the same cups as the people that were eating there before, as opposed to wearing it, you're just, like, eating off what they were eating off of. But what's, what's the common denominator? They clean them. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I just feel like that's kind of, like, it seems like more of an excuse. I've worn thrifted clothes my whole life, never had any issue with any sort of cleanliness. I mean, if it has like a bunch of stains on it, maybe don't buy it. I don't know. I just think that that's something like, maybe there's bigger things to worry about in life than like, oh, it's going to be unclean. But that's just one argument to make. If you are feeling incredibly overwhelmed and also just going back and thinking about your closet and the sort of clothes or pieces that you have, I have a really like nice little resource for you. It's called goodonyou.com. ECO or ECO, that's like the website. I'll put it right here and I'll link it down below. But it is the coolest website ever. I found it a while ago and then I just came back to it today when I was doing research for this video. And basically it has a directory where you can type in any brand or like clothing store and it will give you a rating. There's like five different ratings basically from worst to best for the environment, the people that are like creating the pieces and um, clothes and then animals in the sense of like using leather or using fur or things of that nature. So it gives a rating for all of those and then it gives a like complete rating, I guess, like of the brand and how sustainable it is or how good it is for the environment. Let's move on to the most exciting part, which is, all right, so now that I have all this information, what are some places and resources for me to shop? So I've sort of split them up into three different categories. So we have the single dollar sign, the double dollar sign, and then the three dollar signs, which obviously is in reference to price. I just felt that depending on whatever your financial situation is, I think it's nice to have options. If you're able to spend a little bit more money on clothes, I think that there are some companies that are really great and great to support and also might last longer just because they're better made pieces. Just in general, if buying clothes isn't necessarily something that you can spend a ton of money on, which I totally understand. I have some great resources for you. So let's start with the single, the single dollar signs, the most affordable things. I have two categories for that. The first one is of course thrift stores. Basically all of my clothes are thrifted at this point. The majority of my shoes are, all of my jackets, all of my accessories and purses and stuff. So I am a big fan of thrifting and I feel like that that is probably the best situation for me to purchase my clothing. Thrift stores, we have of course, Goodwill, Salvation Army, Savers, Value Villages, things of that nature. Okay, next up, I feel like this is something that literally no one talks about and maybe it's just like not that popular among this demographic because I definitely feel like I stand out a little bit, but the next thing is yard sailing. My mom and I recently, because of COVID, we've just been wanting to like get out of the house and so we came across a yard sale sign a while ago and literally every weekend since then we have been going out to some yard sales i feel like it's really nice especially during covid because it's outside everyone wears masks and it's just like a very low-key kind of thing um especially the prices are fantastic i will recommend that you get the app it's called yard sale treasure map app this is what like the little thing looks like but it is absolutely fantastic. All you have to do is type in your zip code and then it'll give you within a 20 mile radius every yard sale that there is um, in your area. We've had extremely good luck and honestly a lot of stuff that I have found recently that I've added to my wardrobe has been from yard sales. Another thing I like about it is, although I do think that Goodwill is a decent company for the most part, I definitely like the idea of kind of supporting these like families and people. I don't know. I just feel like sometimes it's nice to not have your money going to huge corporations in my head. That's how I view it as. 
so for yard sales pricing is literally fantastic it does depend on the yard sale but i found great pieces from 25 cents to like five dollars tops very very good deals and honestly there's just people that are just trying to get rid of their stuff and selling it to see if they can make any sort of profit before they just donate it so they're really you're helping them by taking it off their hands so this is also an opportunity where you can kind of, if you're feeling a little confident, you can kind of like go back and forth and barter with them. When springtime rolls around, the amount of yard sales is absolutely insane. And little tip, church yard sales and neighborhood yard sales are absolute jackpots. The amount of stuff that you find at a church yard sale, because it's literally a whole entire church's junk that they've put together and sold. So it's like the most amount of diversity in the products. It's, it's a great find. So moving on to the second tier, we have first up, ebay which recently i have been obsessed with searching on ebay for absolutely anything like i said in this video we're focusing more on fashion and clothes but they have absolutely everything me personally i when i go onto ebay i search whatever i'm looking for my favorite thing to search for ever is vintage nascar shirts because i have an obsession with them let's get some pictures of me wearing them here because I have like a very nice collection of them. Typically they range from being about eight to $15, or at least that's what I'm willing to pay for them. So I go in, I search for that. And then the key is when you're searching on eBay, because there are some like wholesale sort of things on eBay, you're going to go to condition and you're going to either used or pre-owned. And basically that's just when you're uploading something onto eBay, you click that if it's a used piece of clothing. And the whole point of that is like, it's not really helpful to be buying stuff that is new off of eBay. In the sense of not like if someone has like new with tags, but new in the sense of it's someone that literally just ordered a giant creative stuff from AliExpress and then is reselling it. That's not what we're trying to do. So I always think just going to pre-owned or used is the best way to find it. And you can also search things by price or color. So it's almost like a little bit more expensive online thrift store, which if you're looking for that, I feel like that's kind of great. And if you're able to spend a little bit more money, it's a great thing to do. So I learned about this probably six months ago. Otherwise, I would have had no idea. But Goodwill actually has an online store so shopgoodwill.com is literally almost like an auction site for certain things that people have donated to goodwill i'm not exactly sure how it works or which products or they pick to put on there and stuff like that but there is the auction capability and also for buy it now which just basically means like you pay whatever price they have but they have a ton of stuff and it's really nice because it's organized by categories you can go to categories and then clothing or automobiles or crafts or literally whatever you're looking for and they just have so much stuff you do have to pay for shipping, which is like a little bit of a negative. So that's why I put it in the second tier because it can be a little bit more pricey. It's also nice because they're already sort of sorted and curated for you to find what you want. I think like it's a little gym that not a lot of people know about. So go ahead and check it out. So last but not least for this section is Depop. And I've never bought or sold anything on Depop. I just think it's sketchy. And I just am not a big fan of sort of what it's turned into. I feel like a lot of people are just reselling things that are fast fashion. So buying a shirt or 10 shirts from Zaffle for $5 each and then selling them for $12 each. I just think that's lame. I don't really think that's a business. I just feel like that that's kind of a scam in a way. And just, if you are fine with that, that's fine. And that's your prerogative. But at least for me, I don't really feel comfortable with that. And so I try to steer away from Depop. I don't know. I also feel like that stuff is just overpriced on there. So for the third tier, honestly, I feel like you might want to do your own research on this because I'm not in a situation at this time where I feel comfortable or have enough money to be spending a ton of money on sustainable clothing. But Patagonia Reformation and Pact, decent to good ratings on goodonyou.com or .eco, whatever. So I feel like they seem decent. I don't know a ton about any of these companies, if I'm being completely honest, but I definitely think, again, if you are able to spend the money to get some good basic pieces, that's great great again i would look on the website good on you because they do have a list of like great different sustainable stores and also i will link down below a list of affordable sustainable brands and stuff a lot of them are just smaller so i haven't heard of them but i did my best to kind of research and pull together some that i thought would be decent or at least like a good jumping off point to find other ones so hopefully that was helpful now let's talk about small businesses because i feel like especially just this whole year has just been honestly awful for everyone in the world it's just everyone's been affected in one way or another and a ton of small businesses have just been having a really hard time so i think it's so important to support them in any way that you can 
I have pulled together some of my favorite small businesses that I've been following either on TikTok or on Instagram or things like that and I will link their websites down below as well as I'll insert some screenshots. The majority of the time the people that are running these accounts are the people that own the company and so it's like a small little business and they post videos of them making the clothes. I just think it's really cool to sort of see the process and you know that it's made with love and you can obviously ask questions and communicate with them to see like where they get their resources and things of that nature but I just feel like having people like hand sewing your clothes that's just really cool and definitely a more ethical way than supporting like forever 21 and also you're supporting them it is a little bit pricier which is why i kind of added it at the end but they definitely do range in price so yeah just check it out and also comment down below if you have another small businesses etsy is another great one i don't know as much about their whole clothes sort of deal on etsy but definitely for christmas i bought some very fun gifts from etsy from little small businesses this is such an important time to support these people and just not giving your money to big corporations sometimes that's kind of my thing all right thank you guys for watching i hope you like this video i honestly tried to compile a bunch of information together just to make it as informative and helpful as possible hopefully that was accomplished and you learned something or are interested in learning more about something that i talked about yeah i just think that it's not necessarily talked about a ton and when it is, they don't give you the proper resources and things like that. So I did my best to do that. Again, comment down below if you have any small businesses, especially clothing small businesses that you think are cool and that I would like. So I would love to support them. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Um, and I'll see you in the next video whenever that is. I'm pretty sure I haven't posted since August. So we'll see on that.